I've seen it as very problematic. Um, um, this, uh, this area is very uh, uh, doctrinaire, it's highly ideologized. Um, it relies heavily on, on invalid thought systems, uh, like for instance, uh, some of, some of the, that, that field relies on, on Marxist thinking. Um, a lot of it relies on just plain materialistic thinking. Um, it, uh, it relies heavily on, on false assumptions, <coughs> and particularly false assumptions about human nature. And one of the things that we do teach the people is that one of the most important things is to base any scheme on valid assumptions, and particularly in the kind of, of teaching that we do, uh, you have to have a correct and valid view of human nature. And if you do not have a valid view of human nature and adhere to false assumptions about human nature, then your scheme will be invalid. And, uh, you know, that could lead to all sorts of disasters and, and awful, awful things. And, of course, we have seen, um, we have seen extremely high-level uh, worldviews lately, in the last hundred years, based on uh, false assumptions about human nature, just to consider Marxism as a good example, fascism is, an, is another one, um, and uh, all the schemes were built on it, and uh, the disasters and the genocides that have uh, uh, resulted uh, from it, and, uh, and in a lesser way today, you know, we see many, many schemes in society and in human services that uh, are just not based on valid assumptions and including uh, being based on invalid assumptions about human nature. A lot of it is tied in with that um, constructionism, uh, that things are the way uh, pretty much I subjectively want, uh, want to see them to be. and. Um, and there is no truth, there is no reality, um, and everybody's story is of equal validity and equal truth, and uh, no scheme is better than any other scheme, or no, uh, no society is uh, healthier or better or worse than, than another one, and uh, you know, all sorts of these, uh, these kinds of assumptions that are floating around uh, that are not going to sustain a uh, valid and, uh, and successful uh, enterprise. The, the whole idea that uh, human impairment is, is unreal, so to speak, uh, that it's a, a social construction, and uh, it, is, it is so absurd, so contrary to reality in the human experience, uh, that uh, you know, you, you ask yourself as a, if, you, uh, <coughs> if you're anchored in reality, how can intelligent people, highly intelligent people, highly educated people, adhere to a belief that is so basically and evidently, self-evidently wrong? These kinds of beliefs are luxuries of, of uh, uh, affluent societies, essentially. And uh, um, and as long as uh, there's affluent societies that can afford these luxuries, uh, uh, you'll you'll have these deluded people. Who, when you see things clearly the way they are, rather than the rosy way people want to see them, then obviously you get into uh, conflict or, or controversy, and people don't want to to hear what you what you what you see. Don't want to hear that. Well, I, I alluded earlier to the fact <coughs> that there was a, a, a legitimate and, and realistic um, uh, vision of the, uh, the human being of, of limited intellect that said uh, uh, that that person is a human being, uh, that person is a member of society, this person has citizen status, and that person should be listened to, and uh, 
and should not be disposed of unilaterally uh, by people in authority and power and so on. So that's uh, what, what Neo you promoted initially, uh, and, and that that's, was realistic. Uh, uh, and that was perverted eventually into what we call radical um, individualism, and a, uh, that puts the individual at the center of, of the universe, and and the radical autonomy, which uh, decommunitizes the individual and segmentizes uh, lives and uh, society, and uh, radical self-determination, uh, which is radically self, uh, radically uh, decommunitizing, because no society can thrive when every one of its members is a god or a godlet. Uh, something has got to give. People have to be prepared to surrender a great deal of themselves and their autonomy and their desires and their wishes and their comforts and so on to make a society work. Uh, and uh, the radical individualism and self-determination doesn't. It puts the individual literally at the, uh, in a position of a, of a godlet, including a uh, godlet with all sorts of entitlements that other people are obliged to provide and meet. Uh, so in, in, uh, it was a classical tradition that responsibilities and uh, um, rights and obligations went, to, went hand in hand. That for every right you had to have an obligation. And the uh, Radical individualism movement has denied that. They said, I have the rights, other people have the obligations. And it is a, 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 a dramatic, uh, a dramatic evolu step in, you know, in, in uh, evolution of people's thinking and in terms of uh, uh, social theory, you might say, and, and political theory. Uh, to adhere to that sort of uh, absurd belief that this is is possible, that so societies can function like that. You know, that's, that's another one of those modernistic, uh, entitled, uh, modernistic, uh, affluent uh, fantasies. It's natural uh, that people would band together to find strength and uh, to uh, oppose oppression and so on. The problem, as always, is uh, uh, how far do you take it, uh, and uh, at what point you are you saying I'm satisfied, um, and uh, and at what point are you are you saying that um, some of our interests uh, um, can be subordinated to to the the bigger whole, the the the. the the common wheel and 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 so on, and in this this time, this age, and uh, um, uh, no one once once these movements get going, uh, they uh, they're no longer self-limiting. Um, they uh, press toward the actualization of uh, in an absolutism and extremism, and uh, and so we, you know we've seen this with. Uh, 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 the racial domain, and we've seen that with the women's movement, that uh, the, the extremities that, that these have gone through, um, and, uh, to, uh, and to some degree uh, uh, still are, um, that, uh, that they've become, at a certain point, then, then obstacles to a viable uh, functional society. Do those, do those people that take it to the extreme, however, invalidate those who don't? Um, well, probably not, but, uh, uh, but to the degree that they, uh, that they end up um, determining, so to speak, what happens, uh, that they influence uh, the, the, uh, the outcome. Um, I mean, when, when you consider, let's just look at the uh, the, the racial situation. Uh, I mean, all the progress has been made, and yet uh, we have uh, vast segregation 
vast, vast segregation. Um, we have tremendous resentments, you know, uh, uh, hatreds floating around left and right, uh, and um, and we have uh, uh, social consequences uh, uh, like like the the, <laughs> the urban ghetto that nothing like that existed at one time. Uh, that's intractable. Nobody has any answers to the to today's racial urban ghettos, you know, and uh, and that is a result of things having gone. Uh, um, and they're not all due to racism. That's the interesting thing, you know. Um, so poverty seems to play a large role there as well, and, and well, as you mentioned, devaluing perceptions. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's uh, people have difficulty dealing with developments that are multidimensional and. Um, that are complex, and that have many positives and negatives at the same time. And they usually take just one element and play that up instead of looking at the totality of the situation and, uh, and its complexity and what, what it implies and uh, what it means to society. This goes back to understanding human nature and understanding human impairment and understanding mental impairment and specifically the kind of mental impairment that occurs at birth or early age. And this is one of the things that's being denied these days, that there is such a thing as uh, incompetency due to mental impairment from birth or early age. It's very, very real, and it is very, very limiting to the person who uh, uh, has, quotes, uh, that incompetency. So. Uh, by the very definition of mental retardation, uh, you, you have uh, people whose minds are not capable of dealing with certain uh, challenges and uh, certain um, uh, ideas, certain thoughts, certain uh, problems, and, and so on. And you have to make up your mind. Uh, and is that impairment for real, or is it not? Now, uh, what particularly those disability people say is they talk out of two sides of their mouth. On the one hand, there's this denial of the reality of the impairment, including, in our case, uh, the, the denial of the reality of the mental limitation of mentally retarded people. And on the other hand, there's a demand that these people be supported by society at a tremendously high uh, social and economic cost. So you have to ask yourself, why should the ordinary citizen have to uh, economically support uh, and, and pay all these taxes and, uh, you know, and all this money for all these services to people who, who are being said not to have any impairments and have nothing wrong with them? You know, uh, this, may, this makes no sense. Um, it's one of the, the, the illogical, you know, contradictions in, uh, that we now see so much of. So, um, so to the degree that a, a person's mentality is not adequate to deal with high-level and complex and abstract issues, it makes no sense to have these issues resolved by people who lack the capacity to deal with them. And that is what has always been believed worldwide. This, it's a universal. And it's only now, in this peculiar mentality of modernism, that this, re that this uh, reality, I guess, is being denied.